Hi, I'm giving you kind of a pre-video for lab this week because we have a lot of stuff to get done. And I don't want to spend too, too much time at the beginning of class. Um, what we're going to be working on in both a kinetic and a thermodynamic fashion is the Friedel-Crafts reaction. And the Friedel-Crafts reaction is a very old and very famous carbon-carbon bond forming reaction. And it's also another reaction like the Diels Alder that won the Nobel Prize. And it, you'll start to notice as the semester progresses that a lot of the Nobel Prize winning reactions are reactions that involve carbon-carbon bond formation because of course carbon-carbon bond formation is kind of really the crux of organic synthesis. Um, and a Friedel-Crafts re Friedel reaction is a type of EAS reaction and an EAS reaction is an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. And, you know, I believe this is already be, being covered in lecture. I believe you've already done nitration. Um, so this is just another version of this where you make a carbon-carbon bond. Um, in electrophilic aromatic substitutions, there, there are essentially three parts. The, in the first part, what happens is the, aromatic, the um, electrophile is activated. Uh, the problem with this reaction is that you're actually attaching something, an electrophile, to an aromatic ring. And as you've learned in class, aromatic rings are extremely stable due to their aromaticity and the kind of perfect resonance that they, they embody. So for an electrophile to actually dig into that pi system, it has to be an incredibly strong electrophile. So the electrophile usually requires activation and this can involve a catalyst, as it will in this reaction. So for example, um, if this is my electrophile, it would have some kind of leaving group on it. You would add to it a catalyst. In adding the catalyst, um, the electrophile would normally be liberated, and the catalyst would hold on to that leaving group. In the second part of the reaction, the electrophile adds to the aromatic ring. This is just being benzene. Um, when it adds to the aromatic ring, you end up with the electrophile um, aromatic complex. This is called a Wayland intermediate. And then in the third, and, and if I were going to write a mechanism for this, it would just be the pi bond from the aromatic ring is grabbing the electrophile, and then there's resonance stabilization, which I'll get to in more detail in a minute. And then thirdly, okay. The aromatic ring will re-aromatize, and I, I call this re-aromatization. Okay, and think about the reason for that. When you, when you add an electrophile to an aromatic ring, you've lost the aromatic character of the ring. So to re-aromatize, what it does is it loses the hydrogen. Okay, so in the re-aromatization, and I'm drawing a resonance stabilized hybrid here. This, I'm going to do this in detail for the Friedel Crafts itself. Um, the leaving group that's bound to the catalyst, and remember, if it's a true catalyst, it'll be regenerated, right? That's what people always tell me about catalysts when I ask them. It pulls the H off, and the electrons are given back into the ring, so you have a, the benzene ring back. So aromatic rings do this peculiar thing in that they add, and then... This will be hooked to the leaving group, and then the catalyst is regenerated. But the electrophile adds to the ring, but then the ring has to lose an atom to become an aromatic again because it can't do an, a simple addition. Simple addition reactions aren't possible. Okay, so what is the Friedel Crafts? Okay, let's look at the specific Friedel Crafts we're doing in the lab today. And I'm going to try to do an abbreviated version of this in lab lectures so that I can really get into some GC mass spec because that's what I really want to talk about. Um, in the Friedel Crafts that we're going to do, or in a general Friedel Crafts, what would happen is that you would you take um, an aromatic ring, and in the kind of old-fashioned version of the Friedel Crafts, you have a hollow alkane in the presence of a Lewis acid catalyst such as aluminum chloride, and the outcome is that you will produce the aromatic ring with the R group attached, so notice it's this R group being attached, plus um, XH, whatever that might be, could be a chlorine, 
plus the catalyst, you know, regenerated. And it's very, it follows the pattern of the BAS that I just described. The pro, there are many problems with friedel crafts reactions, okay? Um, I could probably spend an hour on it if I wanted to. But some of the problems associated with the friedel crafts is, one, the product... is more reactive than the starting material. This is a big problem. It's something we have to deal with. Okay, product is more reactive than the starting material. What this means is that, and the reason for this is that this is because alkyl groups, and you just learned this with the deals alder Alkyl groups are electron re releasing or donating. Okay? You just learned that with the Friedel Crafts. Think about it. If this group is donating electron density in, it's going to make the ring more rich in electron density, which would make it more attractive to electrophiles. It'll make the ring more nucleophilic. And I know it's hard to get used to those terms. So that's one of the problems. So the, the problem associated with this is that you tend to get polyalkylation. It's a problem. And it's a problem we're going to have to deal with in the lab as we do a Friedel Crafts. Okay? What are some of the other problems? Um, so the other problem that we're going to specifically deal with is the fact that the... Um, E plus that we're going to make is a carbocation, is essentially a carbocation. And you can tell me what carbocations do. Carbocations rearrange. So one of the problems we're going to have is rearrangement. And it's a real problem, and it's something we have to deal with. Um, there are a lot of other problems with the Friedel crafts, but I'm not going to get into any more right now, because these are really the two we have to deal with. Like I said, I could spend a lot of time talking about the problems. So one problem is when you alkylate, you tend to get more alkylations occurring because the addition of the alkyl group makes the product more reactive. So you get to a point where you have a significant amount of product and the electrophile starts adding to this instead so that you get polyalkylated products. So you say, well, how do I solve that problem? The way you solve that problem is you put a huge excess of starting material in. The other problem we have, again, is that the E plus can rearrange. So let's look at the mechanism of the reaction. Okay, so just looking at a very simple version of this, if we just had benzene, this is going to be kind of a simplified version of what we're going to do in the lab. We have benzene plus, say, bromopropane in the presence of aluminum chloride. Like, what would happen? This is what would happen. The aluminum chloride... Because it's a Lewis acid, and why is it a Lewis acid? Because it only has six electrons around it. It's going to complex, presumably, with the bromine lone pairs, one of the lone pairs. So this will complex. When this complexes, like so, the outcome of that is it makes this carbon very, very positive. Okay, extremely positive. It's almost like, although it's not, truly, it's almost like a primary cation, but it's not. I'm going to put that in quotes because we don't really have primary cations. But what this does, right, the aluminum is pulling electron density off the bromine, and that in turn is pulling more electron density off this carbon, making it very, very, very positive. Strangely enough, even though we don't have a true carbocation, the carbocation will rearrange. So what happens is this carbocation will rearrange and will form this secondary cation. And I can actually draw this secondary cation. So the interesting thing about this reaction is that we're going to have some primary light cation and we're going to have some secondary cation. And the thing is they're both going to react. So let's write the mechanism for both those reactions. So I'm going to get rid of all this. So what I was just doing there, 
That whole thing I just drew was activation of the electrophile. When I complex the aluminum chloride to the halogen, that's the activation of the electrophile. And that, that making that, car, that primary carbon delta delta plus, or making the secondary rearranged cation is, is creating a really active carbocation. What time is it? It's a little over 10 minutes. Okay, I'm fine. I don't have a restriction. Yeah. Okay, so then, so let me do my, um, my, my, my mechanism. So one possibility is, and these mechanisms will be directly applicable to what you're going to do in the lab. One, one thing that will happen is that the pi bond could reach out and grab the primary light cation and just kick this whole group out. And this would be like the leaving group catalyst complex. If this happens, we will obtain this cation, okay? With the hydrogen, notice the extra hydrogen there. There are three resonance forms. And you know, you guys know how to make resonance forms. This is just the one, two, three dance. The double bond goes there, the plus charge is there. Hope you can see that. Um, the other resonance form would look like this. Now I abbreviated this when I drew the generalized version of this reaction. Okay, so all of this combined, this is a resonance hybrid, all of this combined would be this with the dotted lines and the plus charge like that because the plus charge is really at every other carbon. Remember when we did anions and how the anion jumped at, to every other carbon, okay? This is the attack of the electrophile, and then we'd have rearomatization. So our catalyst, and it doesn't matter which one of these you, we use, our catalyst will pull this H off. These electrons will come in, and it'll go back to its aromatic state. That's rearomatization. And then we'd have what a propyl xylene. Now the question is, what happens to that rearranged cation. Is there any rearranged cation in there? If there's any rearrangement, okay, if there's any rearrangement, what will happen in a nutshell, I'm not going to, it's the same mechanism, okay, but what would happen is it would react with this cation and we would end up with this product. So the thing is, when you do this reaction, I'm just going to tell you this, because we're, we're not doing benzene. If we took benzene, this is really what happens. If you take benzene and you add bromopropane, this is a very well-known reaction. Um, you can find it in any book, aluminum chloride, any site, website. You actually get two products. You get this, and this is a kinetic reaction, by the way. This is a kinetically controlled reaction. Under, in the kinetically controlled reaction, you obtain these two products, and we know exactly what the proportions are. Okay, what are the proportions? You get, I believe, 60, I'm going to, you know, round it off a little bit, 66% this, or we get two-thirds of that, and we get 33%, I'm missing a percent there, but we get 30, 33 and a third of that, and 66 and two-thirds of this, okay? And a third of that, okay? So we get more isopropyl than we do n-propyl. And that tells us something about the kinetics of the reaction. That's what we're going to study in lab. All right, so that's kind of like a, gives you an idea about how the friedel crafts happens, okay? You, you, you have some kind of alcohol halide. It complexes. It's possible that the complex can rearrange. They behave like cations, even if they're primary. It's possible we could get some secondary cations. So what we're going to explore instead... Because, of course, that would be boring to do benzene. We're going to take a ring that's more activated, okay? So we're going to take a benzene ring that has two methyl groups on it. And again, as you learned with the Friedel with the uh, Diels Alder, alkyl groups are electron donating. That means this ring is kind of supercharged and it's really activated to react. And we want to see what happens when we add bromopropane. This is kind of the basis of our study and aluminum chloride, with aluminum chloride present, what happens? 
Well, these are the products we can get. We can get, it says this right in your lab manual. You can get this product, that's the enteropyl xylene, or you can get this product, which is the isopropyl xylene. It's analogous to benzene. Now again, how are we going to overcome the fact that the product's more reactive than the reactant? We're going to put a whole bunch of xylene in, much more than we have of this. Okay, that's good. Rearrangement. Well, it's going to be kind of exciting if we see some rearrangement, we're, but we're going to be interested in how much rearrangement we get and how does that relate back to the activation of this ring. This will be our kinetic reaction, the one we do at room temperature. Then we're going to repeat the reaction, or you, you will do this simultaneously, with this reagent, same conditions, higher temperature. And we want to see what kind of products we pull out of there. Okay? So it's really interesting what people think they're going to get versus what they really get. So this one's going to be, this is room temperature, and this is a kinetic reaction. And we want to know, like, how much of each of one of these get we get. And that tells us about the activation of the ring. Then we're going to repeat the reaction at higher temperature, and we want to see how the product mixture changes when we raise the temperature. And I want you to have an open mind that there are other products that can form. These are not the only products. A lot of times people think these are the only products. That's a little hint I'll give you. Okay, so I'll see you in class. Try to watch this. You know, try to go over this, you know, a couple times because it'll make lab lecture go a lot faster this week. Okay, thank you. Bye.